What's up everyone? I am back. So, did you guys do your product placement ho homework last week? Did you guys notice some products that were being promoted? Did your perspective of the products change after seeing them used in a TV show, music video, or game? Good. So product placement intends to make the use of these products seem normal to influence you to use them too. So today we're going to talk about another drug that is often portrayed in movies in a manner similar to product placement. So this drug comes from a plant containing a psychoactive or mind-altering chemical called THC. Can anyone guess what this drug is? That's right, marijuana. It's not uncommon to see this drug used in films in a way that would suggest that it should be a normal part of everyday life. So our discussion is going to focus on the recreational use of marijuana. What is recreational use? Good. So it's the use of a drug for the purpose of getting high, not to treat an illness. So you may believe that you know all there is to know about marijuana, so let's make sure that your perception matches the facts. To test your knowledge, we're going to play a game called The Blunt Truth. So go ahead and open your workbooks to page 18. All right, so in a moment, you will be put into groups. What you guys are going to do is read each scenario and discuss with your group whether you believe the statement is true or false. It's not necessary that you all agree. If you think the statement's true, you'll circle true. If you think the statement's false, you'll circle false on your workbook page. Once you've circled an answer in your workbook, the scenario will direct you to a numbered blunt truth card. And you guys will get those passed out to you. So when you check out that card, you will read it to your group and see who was correct. If you are correct, give yourself five points in the box next to your scenario. If you are incorrect, give yourself zero points. All right, so teachers, if you can go ahead and pause this video and put the students into groups of four or six, they will, each of the groups will need a deck of the blunt truth cards. All right, guys, so to set up this game, you will spread the cards out in random order, face down, so that you can see the numbers. We'll read the first scenario together. So, Sam watched a movie and determined that because the movie stars smoked marijuana on screen, it must be real. True or false, marijuana use portrayed in movies is real marijuana. Discuss whether you think that statement is true or false. Circle your answer. Then find card number 10 and have one person read it aloud to your group. Alright, so if you are right, give yourself 5 points for scenario 1. If you are wrong, give yourself 0 points. Once you've answered all of the statements, tally your score to find out who knew more about this drug. Alright, you guys are going to have about 10 minutes to get this done, okay?
Okay, let's see how you guys did. So, if you scored 60 to 80 points, you know your facts. Good job. 40 to 59 points? Getting closer to the truth. Got to do a little bit more research, though. 21 to 39 points? Don't believe everything you hear. Check your sources. 0 to 20 points? Caution. Things are not what you perceive. So, you might have been surprised by some of the answers to the questions. You might wonder where this information comes from, especially if the information is different than what you thought, right? So the facts and data presented in this game come from a reliable source. A good example of a reliable source is the National Institute on Drug Abuse. An unreliable source would be a source that offers personal opinions or interpretations about a subject based on assumption or rumor. Teachers, you can go ahead and collect the game cards. Um, that way they can get them out of the way. All right, so who remembers the name of the psychoactive substance found in marijuana? Good, THC. So THC is responsible for making the user high. So let's take a look at what THC does to the teenage brain. So THC is going to cause a person's brain to work harder to complete normal everyday tasks. The impaired brain cannot react as quickly or process information at a normal rate because THC is, is blocking the receptors in the brain. To illustrate this, we're going to take a look at the poster of a Stroop test. So I'm going to need one volunteer. Teacher, go ahead and please pick one volunteer. And you guys, the way this is going to work is this picture that's on the screen, um, you will read the color of the text. Go through the whole thing, all right? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do that. So that's harder than it looked, right? This activity illustrates how difficult it can be for someone high on marijuana to process information and respond quickly to normal, everyday tasks. So what did you guys learn in the blunt truth about marijuana and addiction? Good, so occasional users may not physically be addicted to marijuana, but they do become psychologically addicted. Chronic or everyday users, however, can develop a chemical dependency or physical addiction to THC and can experience withdrawal symptoms. Let's take a closer look at how marijuana affects a person's ability to reach their goals. So go ahead and turn in your workbooks to page 19, section titled Goal Interrupted. So let's look at the first box titled Short-Term Goal Improving at Football. Let's read the possible consequences if Stuart chooses to use marijuana, then we'll read about Mary. All right, so I want you guys to fill out the box with your own personal goal. And this goal can be one that you've already completed or one you're working towards now. Go ahead and list the consequences of marijuana use that would affect your goal. I'll give you guys two minutes to do this.
All right, so using marijuana won't just disrupt your short-term goals. Regular uses changes everything about daily life. Let's take a look at what that might mean for a teenager addicted to marijuana. Turn to your workbook, pages 20 and 21. On these pages, you have two teens starting their day. However, the teen on page 20 uses marijuana regularly, and the teen on page 21 is drug-free. Compare the activities of the two teens, paying close attention to what the teens are doing at any given hour of the day. Consider the effects that marijuana use and drug-free living have on their choices and opportunities. Be prepared to discuss what you guys have found, okay?
All right, guys, so did you guys find some differences? Good. So, the legal status of marijuana is the subject of ongoing debate. It's a federal offense to purchase, grow, carry, or use marijuana because of the harm it can cause. However, scientists have discovered some of the effects of CBD and low amounts of THC can be useful in preventing and treating certain medical conditions. Therefore, in some states, marijuana use and limited possession is permitted under the guidance of a licensed medical professional and dispensed from an approved and regulated dispensary. While it's still a federal offense, some states allow recreational use of marijuana, but just like alcohol, it's not legal for people under the age of 21 to use. Even if marijuana was completely legal for recreational use, it still isn't something safe to put in your body. Just like nicotine and alcohol, the risk of marijuana use are significant, and the harm to your body is real. Being drug-free will help you accomplish the things that you set out to do in your life. In our next lesson, we're going to discuss the risk of misusing prescription and over-the-counter medications, as well as the harmful effects of street drugs. So I'll see you guys back here next week.